What's going on, Ed? Where are we and what are we waiting for? Um, well, we're in my office, Brady, and um, it's uh, nine minutes before they announce this year's Nobel Prize for Physics. I'm petrified. Why? Because I think there's only one that I could possibly talk about. <laughs> and that's if it goes to uh, our friends Higgs and company. Otherwise, if it goes to the ones in the rumours, down the rumour mills, then I'm struggling with my uh, quantum teleportation and my slow light and my quantum dots. And the There's some of the rumours, are they? Yeah, yeah, there's a page. Do you want to see the page of rumours? If I bring it up, uh, I think I've got it here. This is from Reuters, Thomson Reuters. So there's the, actually this is quite interesting. Physics, oh, physics yeah. is here. So this is what they're saying the rumours are for this year. Yeah. In fact, Higgs, you'll notice the uh, Higgs isn't there. So the three of them seem to be quantum teleportation, photoluminescence in porous silicon, and slow light. And what do you like on those three topics? I've done a little bit of reading on quantum teleportation because I just thought that looked so neat, and it really is neat. So if they get it, they deserve it. It's, uh, it's really interesting. Slow light is interesting as well. I mean, this ability to slow light down in a medium. Um, that's different from the refractive index. We're all used to refractive index, but this is slowing the group velocity down. And apparently it has all sorts of interesting potential in terms of uh, improving uh, energy loss of systems you know, for, for computers and things. What do you think? What do you think it should go to? Do you have an opinion? I would l like it to go to the Higgs because I think it's just you know, the discovery of a new boson. I, I think it may not because I, uh, the, the announcement of the new particle was July. Um, they haven't yet determined you know, important properties of this boson. Uh, the bosons have got an integer spin, a, a label that's associated with them. And the particular particle that um, Higgs and uh, uh, Broughton Anglaire and Kibble and collaborators were thinking of was a spin zero particle, a scalar particle, but they don't yet know if this is a spin zero or a spin two. And if it's a spin two, it's, it's quite different. It's, it's more like a graviton, a massive gravity uh, type of thing. So that hasn't yet been determined, but we do know there's a boson there, and, we, and it, it seems to work in the way that we would expect this boson to work if it explains the electroweak interactions. All right, so well. if they're brave, they'll go for it, but they may not yet. All right. Yeah. All right, see what happens now. Collège de France, Frankrike, Professor David G. Vineland, the, the National Institute of Standards and Technology at University of Colorado, Boulder, USA. Akademins motivering lyder för banbrytande experimentella... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what they've done. <laughs> We're standing in your lab at the moment. What do you do here? Does what you do relate to this? Do you, is this does this really resonate with you? So we um, also trap particles. Our particles are not photons and they're not ions, but they're neutral atoms. That is in many ways similar to the, to the other experiments, perhaps more similar to Weinland's experiments than Hiroshi's experiments. Um, we, are, we typically trap many of these atoms and we then look at collective phenomena between these large samples of atoms. Um, it is a similar field, but we, what we do is, is, well, perhaps one of the main differences between a neutral atom and an ion is that its interactions with the environment are even weaker, which made it actually harder to learn how to trap the particles because you need some controlled environment. But um, on the other hand, it makes it in some cases easier to avoid the then coupling to the environment that is detrimental to the pure evolution of the quantum system that we want to study and then also use for our devices. Having said that, the uh, successes that uh, the people with ion traps have had, and in particular the, the laureate and his, his collaborators, are amazing and probably at the moment in, in terms of controlling single or sets of few particles are perhaps it's fair to say the most advanced controlled quantum systems in the the furthest we have advanced towards building quantum computers at this stage. I have met both people and I was actually 
very close to starting a postdoc with uh, Dave Wineland a few years ago when I was then deciding to go to Paris instead, but not to work with Awash, but I worked with a close and equally good physicist there. So I'm not unhappy to not have joined uh, Wineland at the time. On the other hand, we also we're very happy to, to work with people who then have worked with, with these guys. And actually, one of our postdocs here is a former student of Serge Roche, and I'm sure we'll have a chance to talk to him also. I'm Feja Orucevic. I'm a postdoctoral fellow in a group uh, of uh, Peter Kruger in the called Ultra Cold Atom. So we work with, uh, on this experiment with uh, rubidium atoms, trying to achieve a Bose Einstein condensate. Big news today in science. Uh, big news, yeah, there are like uh, two Nobel Prizes, uh, one uh, from Paris, Serge Arosh, and another one, uh, American, David Weinland. And they both work in a field which is quite close to our own field, and specifically to mine own, because I, I did my PhD in, uh, in the lab uh, where Serge Arosh is professor, and did my postdoc actually in ion trapping. Uh, so I feel quite close to both. Um, of those. Well, you know what? His supervisor was uh, uh, Claude Quintanucci, who won the uh, Nobel Prize in 95. The supervisor of Quintanucci was Alfred Kastler, who won the Nobel Prize in the 60s. So, yeah, it, I would say it uh, was in line uh, for Serge to get uh, a Nobel Prize on his own. So, yeah, and uh, definitely the work, the work he did was uh, very famous, worldwide uh, known, and uh, I wouldn't say that I'm surprised that he got this Nobel Prize today. Does the fact that you know you've worked in the lab where Nobel Prize work was done does that is that good for you? Does it help inspire you and make you feel good about what you do, or do you not care? What does it make you feel? I know you didn't win it, but <laughs> yeah. what does, does, it, does it is it helpful to you? Well, uh, it is definitely helpful uh, on your CV, let's say, to be frank. Uh, but then, of course, I mean, working uh, with uh, all these great people, great physicists, is always inspiring, and uh, it's always good to learn from uh, from them. Now, there are m much more people and great physicists than the Nobel Prize uh, are awarded. So, but I would say definitely say yeah, that it's uh, having to work with uh, all these great physicists is definitely inspiring, and uh, it can help uh, your own research. Uh, because you, when you have a good teacher, a good master, then uh, of course you are more likely to, uh, to succeed uh, and achieve something more important.